Hey y'all, what's up? Uh, we're about to hop into the vlog for today, but first I wanted to talk to you really briefly about my new book, The First Time Gardener, Growing Vegetables. I wrote this book, it's coming out in February of next year, which is getting closer and closer. Uh, it is, it's, it's geared towards new gardeners, but there's a lot of information in it that will be valuable to those of you who are even, have been gardening for a while, a lot of encouragement, as well as beautiful photos of my garden and charts and lists and all of that great stuff. So when you pre-order a book, what it does is it actually tells retailers that that book is worth their investment. It's worth their time. It's worth, it's, it's worth them carrying. And for a first time author like myself, this is my first book I've ever written. Uh, hopefully the first of many. It's such a dream come true to me to write a book. It's literally a bucket list thing. And when you pre-order this book, it, it helps me tremendously. And I just want to say thank you to all of those of you who have. I know I tell you those of you that haven't yet, the link is down below. It'll be out in the beginning of February, when I think about that day, I am just like, I just imagine this book that has been such a labor of love getting into the hands of all of you. And I don't know, I just, I, I can hardly stand it because <laughs> like, I'm so excited, so nervous, and I just can't wait to share it with you. So the link to order the book is below and uh, let's jump into this vlog for today. My niece came, added to my son. <laughs> Asher's coming. Asher's coming? Yep. Oh. Yeah, I was thinking Ava. Ava, yeah. Here, will you hold this? It's time to prune my roses. <laughs> I think they're getting a little out of hand. <laughs> Definitely time. Not today though, right Ben? Yeah. Now it's... It's egg gathering time. That is so rude, right? I hope you guys are not tiring of my sunflowers because I'm going to show them to you as long as they still look lovely. Terribly sad thing has actually happened in the garden. Um, the geese were out here. I showed you guys a couple times. The geese were walking around. They kind of were getting under the fence and I was like, whatever, they're not gonna hurt anything. I've always heard you can keep geese in the garden and they won't hurt your plant. Well. Here are my bean plants. The geese actually ate every single leaf off of every bean plant in my garden. Like all of them. These are peas, but still. So I'm assuming you're pretty upset about the geese eating everything in the soil? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't love it. I don't love that they did that at all. I'll be honest, but it also, I, I let him in here, so it's my fault. Mm -hmm. This is my son, Asher. He actually isn't in just a ton of videos, but he he's a little shy of the camera, is that true? But he is yeah. choosing to be in the cameras, or in the videos more. So Asher, you wanna tell everybody how old you are? 13. He's 13. So do you wanna talk about farm life? It's okay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of you, will make comments about our kids being super interested in the farm. Asher's actually not a huge farmer kid, but there are things that he really likes. He likes his cat, Bruce, and he takes fantastic care of his cat, Bruce. And a lot of times whenever we're doing farm stuff, he offers to help with things like he'll make the little kids lunch and do things like that. He finds ways to help us do the things that we like to do, even though they might not be the things he likes to do. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. He also likes reading. Yeah. Yeah. He's a pretty cool guy. And very funny. <laughs> but we'll just have to catch him we'll just have to catch him off guard to get the to get the funniness out. <laughs> what is this, mommy? That is ginger. But can we go in the woods? Yeah, we'll go in the woods. I was gonna take a look at these roses I'm right here. We're not gonna go in the woods. We're wearing Crocs, so. Okay, you don't have to go in the woods. That's okay. I don't like getting ants. Yeah. Well, look at these roses. Look how pretty. Uh... <laughs> You're stopping to smell the roses, Ben. There's a pretty one down here. There's a really pretty rose. <laughs> oh, 
Thanks, Mom. Goodness. The goose gang is on the move. They see us out here and they think there's food to be had. Considering the fact that the geese ate a tremendous amount of the plants in my garden, they ate all the beans, all the peas, the trellises with beans, they ate everything from like, well, it's like here down to me, you know, gooseneck height. Uh, they, they took out most of what I'd planted for fall. Thankfully, they did not touch the okra, the second planting of okra. They didn't eat the basil plants, which I had new basils coming up, and they didn't eat the roselle. So those were some of the things I was looking forward to for the fall. But they ate everything else, and I just decided that I'm gonna let this garden rest over the winter. I'm gonna focus on growing in the high tunnel and uh, just let it go because I could come out and try to re-sow stuff, but then I'd be frustrated. We're gonna replace the fence entirely before the spring garden goes in. So right now, rest, forced rest, but rest is still good. <laughs> Bear can come in the chicken yard. Basically, rough, rough, you're not gonna be in here. <laughs> hey, no chasing those chickens. Bear, leave it. You better slow down. Could he hear you? Yeah, he can hear me. Hey, girls. Taught me that. <laughs> Who taught you that? Dad. Dad, that's good. What a good lesson, chicken catching. All right. Oh. Here are our early bedtime chicks. They're already roosting. Goodness gracious, we got some eggs to collect. Careful. I'm putting two in at the same. Jeremiah's sister was over today and saw our big stack of egg cartons and asked if she could take two dozen. And I was like, yeah, and she said, are you sure? Yep, I am one sure. One has a crack? Yep. Um, that one right there. Okay, I'll hold the cracked one. I think that's cracked. Um, Actually, no, it looks like another one broke in the in the nest box with them. We've got some young layers. They're still working out the kinks of their eggshells and stuff. Where did it go? Dang, this one isn't cracked. It's just dirty. And okay. wet. It's okay, put it in there. That other one broke and that's what did it. That's a big one, that's a double yolk right there. Mm -hmm. That egg. It's yeah, massive. This one's also really big. Here it is next to a regular one for reference. Yeah, those are big. Those are their new layers. This, if this one hatched a giant. These are all big. And heavy. Look how long this one is. Yeah. That's what happens when you get new layers. They have they grow they lay weird little eggs. But that good. one's so so like round. Yeah, it's a nice one, huh? This one's white. Mm -hmm. Duck eggs are white. Sometimes one time we saw an egg right, and I think it was grandma. We call her grandma because she looks like a grandma. Yeah. And it was a blue egg. Ooh, nice. All of hers are blue eggs and she'll eat ace one egg at a time. Yeah, they all only lay one egg at a time though. But they, like, they all lay one egg at a time. That's cool, now we just gotta go give it to Asher. That is a full egg basket. So this is a four dozen egg basket. So this is right at four dozen eggs. I didn't count them, but, um, but knowing that this basket is a four dozen egg basket, I just know that this is close to full. This is like the evening from yesterday's eggs plus today's, it's evening now. So we gathered eggs like late in the afternoon yesterday. So it's not all from one day, but from like one and a half days. Still, this is a lot of eggs to be getting at a time. And this is not even all of our layers because we do have quite a few blue, green, and dark brown egg layers, which are obviously not represented in this basket. So this is exciting. Right now what I've been doing with all these excess eggs is we're eating a lot of them. We have uh, five boys at home. The kids are homeschooling, so they are eating three meals a day at home. We have Ben Turn and Michaela here. They work here uh, five days a week. And we have Jeremiah's grandparents here. So we have a full house of people that are eating food here every day. So we can, we can eat a lot of eggs. Uh, aside from that, there are actually still leftovers. 
And I've been freeze drying batches of eggs, just raw, where we can just add water back to them to use them in recipes or to make, you know, scramble and make quiche and stuff like that. I had somebody ask me about water glassing. I've never done that before, but I do think it would be interesting to experiment with that. So, you, hey, you wanna carry these up for me? And go put them in the... Oh, that's a full basket. Thank you. Thanks for coming and being in the video. You're welcome. Hey, um, I was gonna go check on the goats. You wanna go out here first? Yeah. Well, come on. Yep, hop over. <laughs> This ditch is basically a bit of innovation that is going to allow that big bucket to be an in-ground pond for the ducks that can be drained down here. Through that pipe and go to there? No, the ducks won't go down the ditch, just the water that we drain off from their little pond. Yep. Here are the turkeys. Hey birds. Those handsome guys and this nasty man back up bear you're gonna smell oh no Winona's on the other side of the fence that's not good what is he doing he's being a buck he's smelling us I just really want really want to pet him he stinks he smells like pee so we're supposed to put him in a bath a bath? No. He would just pee on himself some more. He wants to smell like pee. So we can't bathe it off of him. He wants to smell like that. It's his eau de cologne. That's how he's attracted the ladies. Oh, I have to tell y'all a funny story. Yeah. So Asher, my son who you just met, he has always been incredibly bright. And he started reading really young. And he just had a lot of comprehension and he wanted to read everything. And one time we were getting ready to go to church on a Wednesday night and he was in the shower and he shouts out from the shower and there was some like Axe body spray or body wash in the shower that was something that I guess it was one of Jeremiah's brothers or something was when they lived with us. And he calls out of the shower and he's like, he's like, mom, and he yells. And I mean, he's probably like at this point, like seven, I think. And Jackson, who's a year and a half older than Asher, goes to help him to see what's going on. And I'm, I'm in the hallway listening. And he's like, I can't use this body wash. It says it attracts women. <laughs> Jackson. And it's like, Mom, Asher said he can't use the body wash because it attracts women. And I said, that's just advertising. And uh, Asher's like, what's advertising? And I was like, Trying to explain this. Oh, hey ladies. Hey, stinky boy. Are you coming, Ben? Goaty. Hey, quit. Goaty. Hey, stop. You have no. to watch bucks when they're in rut because they get really pushy. Anyway, the message that got through to him was that there was something in the body wash called advertising that was going to attract women. And he was very skeptical about using that soap to get clean because he didn't want any advertising. And so now <laughs> I still think about that. Somewhere I have that story written down. I think it's even funnier than I'm retelling it now. So you're doing all the wrangling up efforts right now, Maya. You're just knocking it all out. He has a net. Maya is gathering up all the loose chickens and clipping their feathers to hopefully keep them in the yard. Uh, Winona, the goat, is on the other side of the fence up here, so I'm gonna have to go figure out how she got through and uh, get her back in here. Cause we definitely, that's not our property. We don't want her hanging out over there. And I think that probably like gathering up efforts are just an inevitable part of having a farm, but it definitely, will make you want to fix your fences. So all the La Mancha's girls works. are in here right now with Dr. Ennis uh, making La Mancha babies. Why Nona? So Ross Poldark is really not happy with his lot in life right now, considering he's on the other side of the fence 
from the Goaty Girls. So far what we've done is take all of the female La Manchas, which we have five. Technically we only have three that are full blood La Manchas. And then we have two that are mixed. One is half La Mancha, half Nubian, and one is three quarters La Mancha and one quarter Nubian. They're all in here. All of their babies will be majority La Mancha or full blood. And uh, we've got him in here with Dr. Ennis, which is one of our bucks. And then we also have Ross Poldark, who's unrelated to him. And they're both completely unrelated to our entire herd of girls. My main goal this year is not necessarily um, trying to make certain matches. I really just want more baby goats and I want my does all in milk in the spring. I'm just a little bit concerned that they're still going into heat and opening up. And I think Dr. Ennis is doing his job, but I haven't actually seen it yet. And I know he had that leg injury, and so I'm wondering if maybe there could be something that would keep him from it. So we've thought about switching it. Oh. Oh my. <laughs> Sound like Ralph in the show. They sound like Rick and Ralph in the show. <laughs> oh, the, back up from the fence. I don't want him to pee on you, babe. <laughs> They're they so gross. We just had a little bit of a scuffle uh, in the goat yard. This is one of those things that probably wouldn't make for a good video, but trying to video it while it was going on might have been dangerous. Um, so, Ross is more mature goat than Dr. Ennis, and the girls are not standing for Dr. Ennis. Um, and basically, we were trying to get the door open. Ross pushed through. He was in here. We were scared he was gonna hurt Dr. Ennis. We finally just put a, switched him. But there was a there was a moment there where there were goats everywhere and um, just no. See, I put her in with Dr. Ennis three weeks ago and she just came back in to being open. So he's not doing it. So we switched him. He's sad. His lot in life just changed. Sorry, Doc. And now Ross is happy because he's got the girls. It's not ideal to do it this way. Ideally, you monitor your goats when they open, you put them in with the bucks, you see them breed, then you know exactly when your babies are due. I don't really have quite the time to do that, so I just put my girls in with a buck for a month uh, to give them an opportunity to breed. And this way, I'll mark today on the calendar and I'll mark five months from today on the calendar. And uh, the babies born before then, I can attribute to Ennis and the ones after I can attribute to Ross. There might be some gray area there in the middle, but it'll be okay. And I just want you guys to know that this picturesque little scene, it stinks so bad here right now. It smells like old blue cheese. And unfortunately, because they're right by the high tunnel, the high tunnel smells like old blue cheese too. So we have all of these sprouts coming up and I actually got a little stumped over something and I finally figured out what it was. Okay, so you see here, these are actually turnip sprouts. They're sown very thickly. I'm going to thin them as they develop their first true leaves. I'll actually move some of them over and kind of spread them out and then thin some of them out. But I had some sprouts coming up and I was like, what did I plant here? See, here's one, here's one. And they looked kind of spaced out. There was one that came up right down here. And I was like, what did I plant? And I was sitting here looking at these and I was just racking my brains because I looked at my, my notes, I made a note on my phone of what I planted in here. And I was like, I must have planted something down here and forgotten. But I'm like, what is that? That doesn't look like any brassica sprout. It's so funny that I did not immediately recognize it. But it, you know, you know when you think you're looking at one thing, but it's actually something completely different and it doesn't even register. <clears throat> This is totally a tomato sprout, like 100%. Like when I had the aha moment of what it was, I was like, how did I not recognize that? It's a tomato sprout. And they're volunteering all in here because of fruit falling from the tomatoes that were growing here through the summer. And there are a lot of them. Um, I just thought it was hilarious that I literally, I sat here and I looked at it, looked at my notes. I sat here trying to remember, I went and looked through my seeds and I'm just looking at it and I'm like, I can't remember what I planted. I just don't, and I just assumed that I forgot. But no, the tomato queen was looking at a tomato sprout, didn't know what it was. Taking the shade cloth off of the top has made for much quicker growth back here. 
Of course, I've got lots of sprouts coming up just all over, but the, the starts that I moved out here, as you can see, they're just growing really quickly. I'm pretty excited. I think I'll probably start harvesting some kale leaves here in just a, maybe, maybe another week or two. Did you hear the ruckus, Nana? Oh, you saw the commotion? Yes, I, saw, I came down to see what I could help. <laughs> well, look at that, look at that rooster. I want a picture, look at that rooster. Oh yeah, you want me to get a picture of him for you? Yes, please. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. <laughs> he is a pretty the rooster. Color. That's the one that Ben Turn brought over. He had a really vocal rooster that was gonna make his dad mad, so he brought it over here. Like we're sitting out here today working on fixing that fence. Yeah. Over there, and he's crowing a bunch, and he's like, "Oh, it's so annoying." I'm like, "I don't think it's annoying." <laughs> I like it. <laughs> How did that goat get over the fence? They can't fly. <laughs> she can do a lot of weird things. She's pretty tricky. She can stand up Dad on her back legs and walk around. Dad let you up there? You telling me that so you don't get in trouble? <laughs> well, thank you guys for hanging out with us today. Um, I'm sorry I missed filming the goat commotion, but I literally, it was just so much at once and Benjamin was right underfoot, which whenever animals do things, like whenever, <laughs> Obviously, if it were ever a situation that we ever felt like was dangerous, like we would actually not let Benjamin in with like the boars. Um, but I just didn't think there was any problem with him being in with Dr. Ennis with us. I will tell you, my kids are not allowed to play in the woods around the bucks when they're in rut because animals, male animals, when they've got one thing on their mind, they're just not safe to be around. There, we go. Ooh, there. he's gonna. <laughs> Anyway, thank y'all for hanging out with us today. We bless you. Till next time.